Parametric hypothesis tests are based on the assumption that your data have been sampled from a normally distributed population. In practical terms, we can argue that this assumption has been met if our sample data are normally distributed. In SPSS, there are many ways to assess the normality of a set of scores. So here we're looking at a data set from Allen, Bennett and Heritage. Two experimental conditions are being compared on a continuous dependent variable, which is speed. So the objective of this video is to make a judgement about whether or not the scores in each condition are reasonably normally distributed. So in the Analyze menu, select Descriptive Statistics and then Explore. Move the variable that you're assessing into the dependent list. And if you have a grouping variable, which you will have for an independent samples t-test or ANOVA, move it into the factor list. Now if you don't have a grouping variable, which will be the case for correlation-based analyses like multiple regression and factor analysis, as well as repeated measures t-tests and ANOVAs, then you can leave the factor list empty. In the Plots dialog, select Histogram and Normality Plots with Tests in addition to the defaults. And now you can click Continue and click OK. Now this provides us with quite a lot of output to assess and firstly I want you to note how we have a separate set of output for each of the conditions. So a separate set of output for each level of the variable which I entered into the factor list. Now the first part of the output that we can look at are the skewness and ketosis figures. Skewness is a measure of symmetry whereas ketosis is a measure of how tall or flat the distribution is. When both are zero, the distribution is approximately normal. Now as a rough rule of thumb, if the skewness and ketosis figures are more than twice their standard errors, then you have cause for concern. Now here they're not, and that's good news. Now the Shapiro-Wilk test tests the null hypothesis that the data were sampled from a normally distributed population. Obviously you don't want to have to reject this null hypothesis, so you want this test to be non-significant, and it is here for both conditions. Now a histogram should look reasonably bell-shaped, although with so few cases in each condition it's not always going to. What you can do though is overlay a normal distribution by double-clicking the graph, and then selecting Show Distribution Curve in the Elements menu. Okay, so moving down, we have a histogram again for both of the two conditions, and underneath those we've got two stem and leaf plots. Now, a stem and leaf plot is essentially a histogram rotated 90 degrees clockwise. It gives a little more information than a histogram though, because it plots every score in the distribution. So here, for the first condition, we can see that there were two cases with scores of exactly 30, one with a score of 31, one with a score of 32, and so on. Now a normal quantile-quantile plot graphs the observed data against the values that we would expect if it were normally distributed. The diagonal line represents the normal distribution. If the sample data are normally distributed, then the points should cluster tightly around this line. A detrended normal QQ plot just graphs the deviations from the diagonal line in the normal QQ plot. And what we're looking for here is an even spread of points above and below the line. Finally, box plots give you another indicator of skewness. The black line is the median. The box represents the cases between the 75th and 25th percentiles. And the whiskers are the highest and lowest scores that are not outliers. If there are any outliers, they'll be marked as a circle or asterisk beyond the edges of the whiskers. So looking at all this evidence then, I think we can conclude that the two sets of scores are normal enough, although they're certainly not textbook examples of normality.